G'day. Welcome back to my hobby room. Now, look at this. <laughs> it's the old woman who lives in a shoe. Now, that's the cat got this for me, little darling. She's um, she's quite famous on Facebook. Yeah. And she runs her own Facebook group. It has done for about seven years or so now, I think. It could be more. And uh, that group, each quarter, has a group built. Something fun that they do. And sometimes it's things like, um, well... It's a floater. <laughs> it was a funny group build. And then there's um, Making Bad, yeah, which you make the worst kit. They're unusual group builds. They're not the, you know, shiniest, wonderful thing. You've got to do something absurd and interesting. Sort of funny, that. So um, this quarters group build is called Lame Ducks. They're the ugliest fuckers you can think of. The uglier the subject the better. And I saw this, I think I saw it like an Airfix magazine or something. I went, oh, so it's just arrived and it's a bit early for my birthday, but it's Bath's birthday next week. So this is her birthday present. I'm going to make for her. It's a shoe. Yeah, I know. She'll get fish. <laughs> Anyhow, would you like to see inside this box? Because it's pretty interesting. All right. Okay. Roll the music. Now this Dashwork Schwimmwagen Triple SG638, but a mouthful, there's a reason for that. A triple, I thought, oh, it must have like a three-cylinder motor or something like that, or it's only got three wheels. No, 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 the guy was Hans Triple. That was his name. And in the uh, early 1930s, he was working on an amphibious vehicle. Well before Mr. Ferdinand Porsche, here yeah, was, you know, basically do his swim wagon, and he came up with this thing. Now, there are two versions of it. This one, the 38s in the kit, right? It's also one that looks like this. Big bug eyes, right? That's not this one. And interestingly, they're um, different colours. The early ones were grey, and then the later ones were Dunkle Gleb. But they actually kept making the 38 version while the 41 was in production. So they had both of them. So the uh, 38 one can be sort of Dunkle Gleb. I don't know. I'm going to paint a lot of it grey. Let's have a look. What do you get for your money? Well, dash work is usually pretty clever. And sprues, all nicely bagged. And they are these bags which I really like where you can peel them open and then if you want to put the sprue away, keep dust off it, get them shut. So you've got one sprue here, which is basically your body and a few other things. We'll look at detail later. You've got a clear sprue. There's quite a few clear things in this. You've got your seats and things like that. And oh, there's, actually there's four seats. Yeah, I think there is. Yeah. There's, um, there's the body shell. <laughs> I'll quickly get that out. That's an easy one. It's this little Ziploc bag here. Look at that. It looks like it's been slide molded or something. It's um, very nice. Very clean. And I looked at photos of this thing online. Uh, there's a website I'll put a link for here, which um, I found a lot of stuff. There's actually both the early grey version and the late dunk or crap version. And um, you can see the difference. You can see the one with the bug eyes. Looks like a bloody bug-eyed sprite, you know. But it's so unusual and it's so goddamn ugly, which is what I wanted. Anyhow, there's only two weeks left in this group build, so I better pull my finger out. So I will continue working on the um, St. Louis, but it's all just tying string and putting, you know, things together. It's boring. And until I get something interesting, I'll bring video out for that. So I'll be working on that in between working on this. Because this will be fun. I think this is an easy build. I can do some wood effects. There's pieces of wood here, just like on the... Um, the, uh, the Porsche swing wagon, right? It's got the uh, wooden floors and this has a wooden deck at the back, which is rather snazzy. Now I notice they've got the four spoke steering wheel on here and that is important because um, there's a three spoke steering wheel and a four spoke steering wheel. We'll talk about that later, which could be an error that they made, who knows? You get rubbery wheels, <laughs> tires. So that's, that's sort of nice. They're good, they'll just basically deform get all mouldy and fall off in a few years time as they do and you've got instructions there right in the bag so let me get those instructions out we'll start going through the instructions and if you think there's only one piece of PE look at that I can build this out of the box remember my mantra of keep it simple we can do that with this we can keep it simple we can build it out of the box those are windscreen wipers that's it and you've got your uh, tickles they're mainly just sort of number plates a few things all right let's have a look at the instructions So here we have it. These are all the parts out of the bag. And of course there are two of those sprues, so we can get rid of one. I'll just review one as we go through. And of course there are the clear parts 
But I'll put those back in the boxes. I'd rather not sort of bugger them up. There's some very tiny little indicators and things, and then, you know, oh yeah, I don't want to lose those. So, very nice picture on the instructions. Yep. And that actually is a camo scheme. Here's a photo, actual World War II black and white photo. So there you go. Interpret the colours how you will, depending on what you think it could be. It is a later one. This supposedly is probably about the 42-43 issue of the 38. Right? So I suppose 38 is probably the year it came out in. Right. So an SG-638. Anyhow, this is definitely a later one by my research. And uh, so it will be probably Dunkel Clip, but um, I rather like the grey interior from the uh, photos here. Here's grey interior. I prefer that. So I'm probably going to do that, break the rules. Rivet counters will all turn over in their graves. I don't care. I don't care. Instructions, oh, usual sort of things. Be careful. Don't glue your moustache. Oh, you know, usual sort of stuff. Who cares? Sprue map. Well, that's basically what I've just shown you here, but it's kind of prettier. So that's nice. As I said, only one tiny bit of PE. That is lovely. And the um, the decals. Decals. Doycals. Stickers. All right. They're um, basically just number plates, and then there's just a few little insignia marks, depending on which version you choose. And they do give you quite a few versions. So, instructions, first thing they do is putting the wheels together, right? Okay, well, that's all that's, that's exciting. That's on sprue A, A, which is the one we've got two of. So, you're going to be putting the wheels on here. So, um, they're going to look rather nice. And you won't have to paint the tyres. Well, we'll probably put a... Uh, Sort of a little light muddy wash on them. I think this is a case where you could do it perfect and clean, which I like. I like that look. But it sort of lends itself. It's going to be splashing around in the mud. I'm going to flick a little bit of mud on it. And I've got some lovely little mud tricks that I like to do. They're really easy. They're really fast. So that A sprue, yeah, we've got two components here for every wheel. One side, inside and outside, which is what it was showing. Yeah, and you've just got the tyre forms a part of that. So that's all very exciting. It's very simple. And then you move on, it's um, actually got the whole linkage mechanism, which is which is quite tricky. I've had some, seen some photos and they've actually got it here. They've engineered that very well, because the photos that I've seen show that um, that whole mechanism. It is as fiddly and as faffy as it's in there. So um, that is good. So those are all bits on D sprue. So um, we'll find D sprue, which is obviously going to be this one. And these are nice. I like, I like it when the sprues have cut out. Right, so you know you're not sort of fumbling around in the dark trying to find a bloody little bumpy bit and you know do brow trying to check what it is. So all the parts you can see are very fine. They're very clean. They're very nicely molded, which I believe is sort of well, that's modern kits and Daswork is a very new manufacturer as far as I know. I mean, I've only really heard of them lately. If they have been going around for a lot longer, let me know. But all the things are good. Look at this. This is the Tonia. All the um, yeah, it's the Tonia. It's the it's the the roof, the floppy roof, beautifully moulded, beautifully detailed there. Anyhow, we're jumping ahead. We're jumping ahead. So um, you start off building all that, and it's quite a lot of work to do those, but they are going to be very accurate and very lovely. And then you won't see any of it. It'll all disappear. You'll fling some mud on it, and it'll never be seen. Yeah, yeah, but you'll have fun building it. You'll have fun building it. So even more, there's more stuff here. There's springs, springs and things. So... Uh, well, these could be the real wheels, actually. Yeah, real wheels got springs and things. So all that, all that, all that. So look, you, you've done whole two pages of faffing around and you've just made up these things which go into the base. But it's kind of nifty the way that they've... Um, you see that they're all sub-assemblies. So you build the whole suspension up separately and then you bring it in, which is sometimes a lot easier than trying to fit rods onto a, to a sort of a, a chassis and you know and, and then basically everything's wobbling. This way you can get the whole thing angled correct and set and then in they go. Also means that you can paint this and you can paint the wheels separately, which I think is a rather clever idea. Maybe that's one of the reasons they did it. So that you can build your body up without having to have the wheels in the way and you can do all your flinging of the mud and zinging and everything and you know paint your body. You got the little prop here. This is the more important bit because remember it is amphibious. Yep, yeah, need it, need it, need it. Yes, yeah, no wide mouth frogs here. <coughs> you know that joke? <laughs> so um, this can be operated from inside. So Unlike the um, the Porsche swing wagon where you sort of leaned over the back was like an outboard motor, you'd fling the thing down. This was actually, there's a lever inside. So you just basically reach around to the back of your seat and 
bingo, bongo, down goes your prop, and you are instantly got um, floaty power. Yeah. Right, they all go on, and you've got your um, your center console, and the sort of the whole gearbox and everything is you're like you're literally on top of the gearbox. Uh, that's it there. You literally, that's a part of it. So um, you know, all the the levering and everything, they, it's right there. There's no carpet in the way or anything. No, which means it'd be easy to maintain and do things with. Seats, yeah, those were the seats which are on here. They're they're pretty basic sort of things. They're little buckety type seats. Now I've seen these in photos. And this little edge piping here, they've painted a different colour. But, you know, you, restorations, 50, 60, 70 years later on, you can't trust them. You can't trust the colours. You can't trust the materials used because they would have been rebuilt. And sometimes people just do what they want. So you've got to look at some of the photos. And the photos online don't seem to show that, the old photos. So uh, we'll, we'll keep delving into that. But it doesn't really matter. I can paint them pink with polka dots on. I mean, it's my model. Piss off. <laughs> So, all right, so there's your seats. Front seats, they went in there. Then rear seats go on here. Okay, so it's a four-seater. No bench, so you can't take it to the drive-in and smooch over to your date. Useless for that. Absolutely useless. Dashboard, it's just a set of binnacle. They've um, faithfully reproduced that. And you may have... Have we got decals for the um, dolls? Yes. Yes, we do. We have a little sticker-on little bloody dolly thing. So that's nice, isn't it? That's lovely, yes, that'll be good. So leave that till after I've painted it. Then you've got um, the inserts, I think, for the, um, well, like the door card sort of thing, you know. But supposedly you can have doors open on this, so let's have a look at that. Ah, yes, so um, those are down, so we can have doors open. That'd be nice to pose it with the door open. There's the um, little light here, it's a little like, um, you know, the... Uh, air raid sort of light or whatever so you can't see it's um just underneath typical you have them on a lot of the tanks it's a little basically a convoy light or whatever a convoy lights at the back isn't it so it's just a little lamp at the front so you can see the ducks as you're floating along that's what it is yeah and that all gets made up there all d parts there's no clear parts in that we have got clear parts which is e e sprue is clear so we have got clear parts for um mirrors and that must be another little sort of illuminating thing so yeah they've got a rotating little um flashlight thing there so you know shh. buttons in buttons in that's a drink yeah hawk oz there come and see <laughs> my kitchen german uh now you're getting into building that um, windscreen now i've seen this with a windscreen folded down flat the same as you can do on the Porsche swim wagon. So I think that'd be rather nice to push it down flat because I don't see any point in having it up. I think it looks sort of rakish down flat. Sort of like, you know, like you do with mini mokes. So that would be good. So that's sort of about it. And then you're mating top to bottom. Now, painting with this, uh, hopefully the camo is just all on this top part because I hope that I can just um, paint this all gray, but paint this, this piece, right? Paint this piece, Dunkle Glib, and then I can airbrush on the camo which they say is grey and other people have done it green oh that's the back piece there but um oh there's your door cards there's your little door cards there so so your door cards can go in there and actually they're not just the cards it looks like that's the entire door so let's have a look at that where are those they're on um where did we make those up oh we made them up here sea sprue I don't think we've looked at much on sea sprue no we haven't sea sprue's got here so yeah there's your door door inserts your door cards which also are the doors so everything's there the front the back everything it's all in one piece so you can have them on you can have them off you can have them hinged open it'd be nice to have them hinged open a little bit i think i sort of like things you know looking a bit unusual these parts are all very nice but they're sort of not nothing to look at there's a few ejection points there but they seem to be in hidden spots so that's good yeah there's nothing really in the way so you've got them here but that's not going to be seen so that's clever they've they've managed to at least figure that out yeah it's mr italieri <laughs> that swim wagon i mean there's just about everything you're going to stare at has got an injection point <laughs> so um parts are all very look this is obviously the railing the back there's a rail that goes at the back on that little ledge so, you know, if you're putting your little, you've been out shopping, you put your parcels on the back ledge there and you take off rather abruptly, well, all your little parcels aren't going to fall off. That's what it's for. Obviously, that's what it's for. So, yes, it's a good looking kit. It really is. And it's lovely and clean and it'll be fairly easy to put together. So um, it's different. It's a different sort of thing to like my Airfix kits. And that's okay for a change. 
that's okay. So there you go. There's that little rail. See, there it is going on there. And you put on whatever that is. Not sure. Might be a mount from a machine gun or something. Not sure what that is. Could be. And you've got these little sticky things out here. Looks like clown car sort of arms, right? That's so you can figure out where the front is because having a big round curve down front, as I know from my car, because my car, very modern car, is Civic, got a big round curve down front. And you have to learn where the edges are because you can't see them because they disappear off and they're not evident that they're there. So they've got these little sticky up things. So the driver would go along and go, watch the ball. Keep the eye on the ball. Yeah. Colours are called out in here, like they have a little square that says A across there. And then you, you have to sort of flip to the front of the thing and go, A, well, that's black. So I usually go around with a pencil and any of those, I kind of mark them in now. I just go around and find all the A's and mark them black. And So I don't have to keep flacking, flipping, fl flapping. I don't have to keep flopping back and forth. Hey, what you teeth in here, you Colour schemes. Well, there's some snappy ones. There's um, this grey with mud. <laughs> and can you see the suspension? No, you can't. All that work and you can't see a bloody thing. All right. And then there's grey without mud. So that was very nice, you know. And then there, these are sort of these little devil stickers for everything. You know. And then you've got grey with no mud, but something's different. What's different? It just doesn't have it's just different decals. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, and then you've got them they get interesting. So this one is grey but it has some Dunkel Gleb camo although technically at this period what it says France 1942 if it's the invasion of France the camo schemes apparently now they figured out they were Panzer grey with a brown this is the thing they've looked at the historical photos and they've gone that's actually a brown which appears lighter than the grey because Panzer grey is almost black and this is the thing. It's out in the sunlight. It's a very, very dark grey. It's not the light bluish grey we all paint the things. It's actually a very, very, very dark grey. Almost black. So a brown would tonally be lighter. So in a black and white photo, Panzer grey looks dark grey. And then you've got this other colour that looks light. Well, it might not be Dunkel Glebe. It might be a brown. It might be. Hard to say. But this has been some of the research. They found people have been doing camo schemes all wrong from the period where... Everything, the German armour in that early period was all primed in Panzer Grey. Then you've got this one, this is a later one, so this is 42. So yeah, it could be Dunkel Glick. It could be. And that's basically, I think, the easiest way to paint this. Some people are trying to paint this grey and then paint all the little spots, right? It's actually easier to paint the lines between than it is to paint spots, believe you me. So that's what I'll do. I'll paint the whole part, top part of the chassis, the uh, Dunkel Poo yellow, right? Or I might do the brown, just to piss everyone off. Oh no, in this period, it would have been the Dunkel Grip. So yeah, I can't do the brown. But anyhow, I'm going to do the interior grey. Yeah, stuff is. <laughs> so you put on your Dunkel bloody baby crap yellow, and then you just go in with your airbrush and you paint lines. And then when it's finished, the lines reveal spots. Yeah. Oh, I'll show you when I do the video, which will be very soon, because I've got to knock this out in the next couple of weeks. So that's it. That's everything. That's the whole kitten to boogle, right? So um, hopefully I haven't missed anything. I'll give you another quick sort of little sort of um, run through the screws, move some things out of the way so you can see. So it's all just lovely. It's it's very, very nicely done. Okay, so, you know, there's not much to see on that one because there's just, I mean, there's your dials. There's your dials. They're very nice. That and um, the wheel rims are quite nicely detailed. I mean, where there is detail, there is detail, but it's sort of, it's just a quirky little vehicle, and it'll probably all come down to the paint job. So it's one of those ones where, you know, it's really you have to paint it. But I don't think it's going to be that tricky to paint, not the way I'm going to do it. Because as I say, what I'll do is I'll paint everything grey, except for that. That, I'll paint yellow. And then I'll do a little trick of um, just getting the airbrush to do all those lines. And that'll give me a sort of a nice soft edge and everything. And bingo bongo, done! So there you have it. That's just a quick tour of this vehicle. Now, unlike normally I do a review and go, oh, look, I'm not going to make this for about 600 years. You know, <laughs> no, I'm making this this weekend. I'm building it this weekend. I'll probably paint it next weekend. I've got to get this done by the end of the month. So for a change, Harry Udini is going to review a model, build a model, and show you a completed version in the space of two or three videos. Well, easy as that. How hard can it be? Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Now, look, um, as usual, buttons down here. 
hit those. Apparently there's algorithms. Apparently it makes things work. And if you can, buy me a curry. Always helps me out. It'll encourage me and keep me fed while I'm making this. So um, thank you very much, Bastacat. This is a lovely early birthday present, and I'm going to have fun making it for the Fock of the River Counters lame duck group. All right, then. That's it. Goodbye from Australia. And it's Huru from Harry Udini.